I believe I have the modifications completed that I'm going to make for a while anyway on the my little machine shop mini mill. This is the model 3900 for those of you who might be wondering. And the only difference between this that I can see in the 3950 is that this one has a tiltable column, which being a novice at this, I didn't realize I didn't really need or want. I'd rather have the rigidity of the fixed column. And for 150 or 200 bucks or something, a little machine shop sells a conversion unit, but I'm not that interested in it. I have this one <clears throat> trammed and bolted down and set at zero, so it's it's pretty good where it is for the kind of work that I do, particularly on aluminum. So I'll leave it as it is. However, I I didn't like the exactly the way I had the the uh, DRO digital readouts installed before. I did a, a series on installing the X, Y, and Z axis. The x-axis is on the bed that goes back and forth, left and right. Y-axis is the in and out, just like a chart. We used to chart on graphs in, in uh, algebra class, trigonometry. And the z-axis is right here. It's the height above the board. And of course, you have the quill here where the, on the head with you know, mount the tools different cutting bits and such in order to do the work you want to do to cut the piece out. So I originally had the DRO for the Z-axis mounted on this side of the mill, but it was always interfering with my controls here to lock things down. So <clears throat> I decided to get rid of the, the uh, torsion spring support on the head which used to come out here, a big round kind of device, since it didn't work all that well anyway, and I kept dropping the head on things like my fingers. So I installed this, you can see it there, this uh, air spring, which is another mini machine shop kit. However, you might notice, and if you can see it back there, there was a problem with it in that that mount originally was supposed to be drilled and tapped into this base down here. Well, I couldn't do that because I didn't have enough room on the 3900. But up here on the, the mount where the motor is, there were two bolt holes already with bolts. I think they're M M8s or something like that. Anyway, uh, they were 50 millimeters apart. And the mounting device had holes at 60 millimeters apart. So I chopped that, got the mill busy, and I cut the a, uh, kind of a sliding mount there, a notch in it. And then I also counter counter drilled it, so there was room for the cap screw, and I used that for the mount. That worked out fairly well. I didn't get quite the lift out of it that I could have gotten. I, you can see I'm a little bit bit shy at the top of the column there, but that's okay. I guess about an inch and a quarter or so. That's, that'll work all right. And then I was able to mount the DRO digital readout on this side, which gives me a lot more clearance. And it's way out of the way there, so that, that pretty well took care of that. Then, uh, then I decided to put the motor on. But before I put the motor on the x-axis, I'll show you how that works in a second. I uh, I put in anti-backlight screws, Delrin screws, so that as I turn the turn the movement wheels, I don't get as much backlash as I did with the stock nuts. Those are on the inside. I had to take the mill all apart to do that. And while I had it apart, I cleaned and polished everything to make it slide as easily as I could on the on the ways. I adjusted the Gibbs. Again, so I got a pretty pretty good setup on it. Now it's nice and tight, ready to go to work. And here's the uh, I had a little trouble with this. The first <laughs> the first kit I got. This is another little machine shops kit. It's refurbished. I don't think they they make the motor anymore and the speed control. 
the motor is inside the box <clears throat> and it attaches to the left hand of the table. And of course there's an Acme feed screw in here that's got a got a little key on one end and a little connection point and this one matches machine to match it. So it'll turn the turn the crank for me. Instead of my having to turn it myself. You might think that's no big deal, but that's a long ways from one end of that table to the other. Well we'll show you here. We'll move the table to the right. This is the speed control. If we're machining, we can run different feed rates. And this is the high speed. It takes it in a hurry to the other end. And it's got a, a stop switch on it, so when it gets to the end of the rotation, it'll stop. So we don't try to crank the table off of the bed. Then we can put it in the reverse direction. Bring it back the other way. You can see that the crank's a little bit faster than you could do by hand there. It saves you a lot of muscle power too. So I really like that. Now I got the, the original kit from the little machine shop folks, but somebody had dropped it along the way, probably UPS. And this uh, cover was damaged and wouldn't fit, so Joe at Little Machine Shop said he'd send me a new one. I'd replace this one and, and I'd send this one back. However, uh, when I got the new one, why well, I uh, tried to mount it. I had a few problems that I overcame by, by playing around with it some. And I did eventually get it to work okay. And the other, I found that not only were the Knobs broken on the other feed, but also something wrong with the board. This is back in the center where I need it. So I, uh, I gave up on the old one that's over there right now in the junk box. I thought about sending it back to Joe and he could use it for something anyway. I'll never use it. But I might fix that, the motor speed control electronics in it too. I don't know when I get time someday. So, in the meantime, I lost a little travel with this guy because you can see that I have the DRO for the Y-axis mounted here where it was before on the side. And I did redo those the uh, mounts and made them a lot solider than they were before. I don't want any slippage at all in there to mess up the piece that I'm working on. Usually always seems to be the last step when I screw something up and then i got to start all over from the beginning. So. I like to make sure that at least the machine is not going to jump up and bite me toward the end of the project. But this plate that, that mounts to the end of the table extends down so far that it does catch catch on my DRO. So I've got the stop set out always, so I don't get complete. I don't get the whole 12 inches travel. I get probably ten and a half. I also set the other side in again a bit because because of the controls over here too. So that's pretty much the the way it looks now. I've thought about going complete CNC with it, but if I did that I'd I'd get a whole new mill, probably uh, maybe a Tormash or something like that or Tormac, I'm not sure how they pronounce it. But this is good enough for the work I do and it's pretty convenient now. I got the fine feed on the uh, z-axis and it runs a lot smoother with that air spring. The air spring is down inside the column. I had to put the air spring in backward, upside down from what, what the instructions were because it wouldn't clear otherwise. I'm not sure what's inside that casting but there's a bump out somewhere in there that's probably this thing maybe, I don't know. Where the, uh, where the old torsion spring was mounted. But it run, you can bring her back up again. Uh, that's a pretty heavy head. I'd say maybe 30, 35 pounds. I haven't had it off of there to weigh it. Okay, the, uh, the baby's ready to go again. 
bolt it down to the bench, and I'll have to route the wires. I have that to do yet to make sure they don't get pinched or get in the way. But uh, it's looking pretty good. So that should be that for a while. If anybody's interested or has questions, if you're trying to make these mods to, to a machine, you can shoot me an email and I'll tell you at least what I ran into, things to watch out for. You can see this fits nice over here, and it gives me plenty of measuring room. It's completely out of the way. The slider slides along that bar, and that's how the head knows where it is. I'm out of the control panel for the DROs over here. And I don't know if you can see what's on there yet or not, but there's the x-axis and the y-axis. Tells me it's positioned right now in inches, 1.451 from the center where I started, and the z-axis, 5.6 from where I started. So that pretty well sets me up as far as the mill goes. Thanks for watching.